millions of years after the dinosaurs vanished, a new terror rose with the dawn. The earth itself trembled at its approach. A shadow that cast a pall of fear over an entire continent. Its beak was a weapon of nightmare designed for one purpose. Execution. This was the terror bird. For millions of years, it was the undisputed king of South America. In its world, silence was the herald of death. It struck with the speed of a cheetah and the power of a dinosaur. A single devastating blow was all it took. The age of the dinosaurs ended in fire and ash. The world was left silent, but in the shadow of extinction, Survivors emerged. Small, ground-dwelling birds began to fill the void. South America became an island fortress, drifted away and isolated from the rest of the world. It became a living laboratory where evolution took a radical new path. Free from competition, they traded the ability to fly for raw speed, developing immensely powerful leg muscles. They grew to colossal proportions eventually towering over every other animal on the continent. And they forged the ultimate weapon, a skull massive and rigid, armed with a lethal hatchet-like hook. While their cousins ruled the skies, the terror birds claimed the earth as their undisputed domain. For tens of millions of years, they were the apex predators. Nothing on the continent could challenge them. They presided over a strange, isolated kingdom populated by bizarre giants found nowhere else on Earth. The native mammals evolved slowly, oblivious to the lightning-fast threat developing alongside them. Until it was too late, the birds had become the ultimate mammal hunters. With speed, power, and that terrifying beak, they secured their place at the top of the food chain. Science knows them as the forest rachidae, the terror birds, a diverse family of carnivorous giants. Their reign was not fleeting. For over 50 million years, they were the undisputed apex predators of their isolated continent. To understand them, forget everything you know about modern birds. These were something else entirely. Fossils reveal the framework but cutting-edge reconstruction brings the beast back to life. Its beak wasn't just for biting. It was a reinforced, hatchet-like weapon driven by massive neck muscles. A neck like a tree trunk provided the raw power needed to drive the beak through hide and bone. Its legs were marvels of biological engineering. Thick, dense bones built to withstand the shattering impact of high-speed sprints. In motion, it was a terrifyingly efficient machine, capable of reaching speeds that would outpace nearly anything else on two legs. They weren't a single species, but a diverse dynasty. Some were small and agile. Others were titans of brute force, ranging from the size of a dog to towering monsters taller than any human. They filled every predatory niche. But one form rose above the rest, the ultimate expression of this predatory lineage, a creature defined by its arsenal. Built to strike hard, fast and without mercy. To understand its dominance, we must dissect its design. Every aspect of its anatomy was honed by evolution for a single purpose. 
the efficient killing of large prey. Standing nearly 10 feet tall, it could look a modern human in the eye and then look down upon them. Simulations reveal its beak could deliver a downward strike with staggering force, easily shattering bone. This immense striking power was generated by massive neck muscles, acting like a biological pile driver. Its feet were armed with massive curved talons, used to pin struggling victims before the final blow. Despite its bulk, it was a high-speed sprinter, capable of running down some of the fastest animals of its time. While primarily a striker, its beak also possessed crushing power, allowing it to break bones and access marrow. Its wings, reduced to tiny vestiges, were an evolutionary trade-off Flight sacrificed for terrifying ground dominance. A successful hunt left its mark. A grim reminder of the lethal efficiency of its design. It was the undisputed master of its domain. A perfect killing machine forged by isolation. From its hatchet-like beak to its powerful legs, every part of the terror bird was a specialized tool for slaughter. Simulations reveal its beak acted like a pickaxe, delivering a downward strike with staggering, bone-shattering force. This immense striking power was driven by massive neck muscles, functioning like a biological pile driver. Its feet were armed with massive curved talons used to pin struggling victims before the final blow. Despite its enormous bulk, it was a high-speed sprinter capable of running down the fastest animals of its time. While primarily a striker, its beak also possessed crushing power, allowing it to break heavy bones to access marrow. Its wings, reduced to tiny useless vestiges, were an evolutionary trade-off. Flight sacrificed for terrifying ground dominance. A successful hunt left its grim mark a visceral reminder of the lethal efficiency of its design. It was the undisputed master of its domain, a perfect killing machine forged by isolation. Their kingdom was the vast South American pampas, an endless ocean of grass that stretched for thousands of miles in these open plains. It was the undisputed ruler, its towering form visible for miles, it was also a master of ambush, using the forest edge to stalk its prey before launching a lightning-fast attack. Rivers and waterholes were prime hunting grounds, attracting a steady stream of thirsty prey. Its world was defined by dramatic seasonal shifts, from parched droughts to torrential floods. It was a nomadic predator, following the great herds and their seasonal migrations across the continent. Even the most fearsome predators must raise their young. Nesting grounds were carefully chosen and fiercely guarded. Territory was everything. They asserted their dominance through imposing displays and thunderous calls. For the most part, they were solitary giants, patrolling vast territories alone, always watching, always waiting. This was a world that belonged to them for millions of years a kingdom that seemed eternal. Its territory wasn't just open plains. It mastered dense, unforgiving scrublands where lesser predators couldn't pass. Under the crushing midday sun, even giants had to seek refuge in the shade to conserve energy. Maintaining those immense feathers required frequent dust baths to remove parasites and keep them in prime condition. From baked clay to marshy riverbeds, its massive, scaled feet were adapted to conquer every inch of its domain. It was a creature born of a violent world, standing firm as the skies turned black and the plains held their breath. When the heavens opened, even the undisputed king of the plains had to find cover. The storms were violent but brief, 
always followed by a calm that renewed the land. Not every encounter was a hunt. With creatures too large or well armored to be prey, an uneasy truce was maintained. As day turned to night, the solitary sentinel continued its endless watch over its kingdom. This was a world that belonged to them for millions of years. A kingdom that seemed eternal. Despite its towering height, it was a master of stealth. Using the tall savanna grass to become a ghost, for its victims the first sign of danger was often the last thing they ever saw. The ambush was launched with an explosive burst of speed that few animals could match. Once in the open, it became a deadly race, a test of endurance and raw speed. It used its powerful legs to trip its victim, followed instantly by the lethal strike of its beak. The blow was precise and devastating, designed to end the struggle in an instant. With the kill secured, its hooked beak became a tool for butchery, tearing through hide and muscle. In a land of predators, a kill was never truly safe. It had to be defended with the same ferocity used to make it. While often solitary, evidence suggests they may have occasionally hunted in pairs, using complex cooperative strategies. They were versatile hunters, active throughout the day but often favoring the low light of dawn and dusk for ambition. But the stakes were high for both sides. Failure was common, and energy was precious. For the prey, a successful dodge meant another day of life. For the predator, it meant a massive expenditure of energy with nothing to show for it. Survival often required patience over speed, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. When the trap was sprung, the end was swift and brutal. A successful ambush meant a high calorie reward. With minimal energy spent, the business of survival was messy, visceral, and unforgiving. After the feast came the necessary work of maintenance. Keeping those massive feathers clean was vital. A large kill allowed for a period of deep rest essential for digesting hundreds of pounds of meat. Even the terror of the plains needed sleep, a rare moment of vulnerability in a violent world, but sleep was brief. With the dawn came the renewed demands of hunger and territory. Life at the top was an endless grind of patrolling, hunting and defending. Always watching, always calculating. There was no room for error. In this unforgiving kingdom, survival was a daily gamble. But the drive for survival extended beyond the hunt. To ensure their legacy, they had to build. The result was a clutch of enormous eggs, each holding the future of an apex predator. These nests were vulnerable targets. Protecting them required constant, lethal vigilance. After weeks of incubation, the exhausting struggle to enter the world began. The chicks were born small and vulnerable, dwarfed by the immense power that brought them into existence. Fueled by their parents' kills, they grew at an astonishing rate, transforming from helpless fluff into gangly adolescence. Survival meant mastering speed, the young were pushed to their limits, learning to coordinate their immense limbs. The instinct to kill was innate, but the skill took practice. Early attempts were often ungraceful, but with every failure came learning. Soon the first small successes signaled the awakening of a predator. Within a year, they were nearly the size of their parents. Formidable, but not yet masters. The time for nurturing was over. To become an apex predator, it had to claim its own world, alone. For millions of years, this cycle of dominance continued unbroken. Until the world itself began to change. But the earth is restless. The warm, stable climate that nurtured the giants began to cool. The lush savannas gave way to harsher, open steppes. 
the cover they relied on for ambush was vanishing, and with the changing world came a new kind of competition. Efficient, social, mammalian predators from the north. The terror bird was a solitary duelist. It was ill-equipped to handle the coordinated pack tactics of the new arrivals. The ultimate confrontation. The ancient reptilian overlord versus the new mammalian usurper. As the climate cooled, the great slow-moving herds they relied upon began to vanish. Victims of the cold and new hunters. Pushed to the margins of their former kingdom, their vast territories shrunk to isolated pockets. Injuries that were once manageable became death sentences in this harder, faster world. Designed for a world of plenty, the giants began to starve in a world of scarcity. Attempts to migrate were met with impassable barriers of ice. There was nowhere left to run. The world had changed. The age of the warm-blooded, fur-covered mammal had truly begun. One by one, the lights went out. The great dynasty of terror birds faded into the mist of time. The plains fell silent. The thunderous footsteps and booming calls that had defined an era vanished forever. Their bodies returned to the earth, buried by the sands and silts of a changing world. They were locked away in stone vaults, hidden deep beneath the surface for millions of years. Ice ages came and went. New species rose and fell. The terror birds were forgotten by the living world until wind and water, the same forces that buried them, began to expose their secrets once more. A claw here, a beak fragment there. Clues to a forgotten dynasty began to emerge from the dust. Piece by piece, scientists began the painstaking work of resurrecting the giant. In the lab, the true face of the terror was finally revealed, freed from its stone prison. Through careful study, we began to understand the biomechanics of a creature unlike anything alive today. Today, it stands again, a silent monument to a lost world and a reign that lasted for millions of years. But bones are just a scaffold. The true terror, the living, breathing engine of destruction, exists only in imagination and memory. The story isn't over. In the dust of South America, the quest to uncover their secrets continues today. Modern technology allows us to peer inside their skulls, revealing how they sense their world and plan their attacks. Science provides the bones, but art gives them flesh, feathers and a face, allowing us to meet the monster. For millions of years, the terror bird was the ultimate expression of avian power a dynasty of feathers and fear. Their time has passed, but in the echoes of deep time, the terror bird still reigns supreme.